Hello everyone and welcome to another ride overview. Today we're going to talk about a rather unique gentle ride, the maze. The maze is the only flat ride in the game that you actually design yourself and also the only designable ride type where the track is only half a tile wide. There are several aspects to the maze that make it very useful for a variety of things, including my favorite thing to do in the game, torturing the guests in more than one way. Let's start by taking a look at the standard maze designs. They can look very nice and since you can choose four different themes, it can fit well in a variety of situations. This is about where the good things end though. Guests are notoriously terrible at solving mazes, so it can only reach a throughput of a few hundred guests per hour at most. Part of the reason is that the maximum number of guests you can allow in a maze at one time is only 16, which isn't a lot. In OpenRCT2 this has changed to 64, which improves things a bit, but it's still not great. Another reason that the maze is bad is that you can't charge a lot for it. This maze, for example, has a maximum possible ticket price of only 320, whereas this swinging ship, for example, already goes up to 620. You can use the maze for guest storage in crowded parks where guests don't pay for the rides. If you lower the number of guests allowed in the maze to just one, you can turn the queue line into a guest storage unit. Put an entertainer in there and the guests will stay in the queue line for a very long time until it's finally their turn to solve the maze. If you want to build your own custom maze that looks fairly nice, there is a very simple way to do that. Start with a twisty path that goes from the entrance to the exit. Then simply fill in the gaps with random dead ends and voila, you have a decent looking maze that is guaranteed to be solvable. There may be ways to make a better maze, but this is a simple way that always works. Before we talk about exploiting the maze, let's take a quick look at how the stats work. Compared to most other tracked rides, this is actually really simple. The base stats of the maze are 1.3 excitement, 0.5 intensity and 0 nausea. For every tile that the maze takes up, up to 100, it gets an extra 0.01 excitement and an extra 0.02 intensity. So, if your maze is 100 tiles or larger, it has 2.3 excitement, 2.5 intensity and 0 nausea. This can of course be boosted a bit more by things like scenery, but you're never going to get very high stats on a maze. The first exploit actually has to do with how these stats are calculated. You see, the guests don't actually need to be able to reach the tiles for them to count towards the stats. You can just build a super short and easy path and add another 100 inaccessible tiles and you'll still get the maximum stats. The guests don't care or even notice and it will make you a lot more money. This still isn't the best you can do though. You can make your maze a whole lot more cost and space efficient by just removing all the other tiles by having a one tile maze. Not only is this the cheapest possible ride in the game at 27 euros, it is also the smallest possible ride at just 3 tiles. 20 of these mazes with path around it only takes up 9 by 12 tiles and costs less than 1200 euros. For that price it attracts 800 guests to your park, as each single maze attracts 40. You can't get any more cost and space efficient than that. Now in practice you won't make a lot of money with these rides as you won't have enough guests for that. But in theory they have the highest throughput of all rides in the game, excluding ones with multiple entrance buildings. With the original limit of 16 guests in a maze, it can reach more than 8000 guests an hour. 
With the open RCT2 limit of 64 it's even crazier, as with that it can reach up to 15,000 guests per hour. As a comparison, a single station roller coaster can only reach up to about 6,000 guests per hour. Of course, you will never achieve those numbers for the maze outside of hyper-optimized simulation land, but in theory it is possible. Because of this insane potential throughput and the fact that each guest is its own vehicle, you never need a queue line for this tiny maze, as they can just walk in whenever they want. The tiny maze is useful for another thing, and that is removing guests from your park without technically killing them. If you raise the ground in front of the exit, the guests will exit into the void and quietly disappear without dying, so it doesn't lower your park rating. This makes room for new guests in your park without having to resort to things like closing the park. The reason the maze is particularly good at this is that it cannot break down. To fix a ride, mechanics enter through the exit building, so if you don't have an exit path, the ride cannot be fixed. Since the maze cannot break down, it doesn't have this problem when you're dunking the exiting guests into the void. There are other rides that cannot break down and thus are good at vanishing your guests, but the maze is the smallest, cheapest and the quickest. If you don't like sending your guests into the void, there are also two ways you can trap guests in a maze. The first way is to simply make it unsolvable. The game doesn't check if the maze is solvable before you open it, so you can very easily trap some guests. The second way is much more interesting, as the maze is theoretically very easy, but in practice guests will be stuck for basically forever. Introducing the left indented maze. Because of a quirk of how the pathfinding in mazes works, if you build a straight line with a load of small indents on the left, guests have a lot of trouble solving it. How this exactly works is a bit complicated, so I'll only give a brief explanation. For the complete workings watch this video. It basically comes down to the fact that when the indents are on the left, every time a guest encounters one, there is a 37.5% chance that he goes into it and then goes back in the other direction towards the entrance. Now the indents are on the right and now there's only a 12.5% chance that the guest goes into it and turns around and goes towards the exit again. As a result, the guests are constantly returning to the entrance with only a very small chance to ever make it out. Here are a left indented maze and a right indented maze next to each other and you can very clearly see the difference. On the right guests are streaming through it, while on the left the 64 guests are all moping around, tired and sad near the entrance. In one in-game year the right indented maze had about 6700 guests solve it, while the left indented maze had 33. If you would make a massive park filling 254 by 254 left indented maze, it would take guests on average about 10 to the power 19,758 real life years to solve it. After I made my video about left indented mazes in the summer of 2020, OpenRCT2 changed the pathfinding algorithm so now left and right indented mazes behave the same. You can watch this video for more details about that. This marked the end of the small impossible left indented maze, as now guests are a bit more capable at solving it. The massive left indented maze still takes a very long time to solve, but that goes for any sufficiently large maze, so it's no longer special. And that is everything you need to know about the maze. It only really has one design that's good for scenario play, but other designs can fulfill the role of just a good looking ride. At the same time you can also use it to trap guests by exploiting their own stupidity, which is always fun. If you enjoyed this video consider giving it a like or leave a comment. You can also subscribe or follow me on Twitch. Thank you all for watching and I will see you 
in the next video.